Hi guys, welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope everybody's having a great day. Did you notice the new intro? That was made by a friend of the channel who wants to remain anonymous and that's fine. I just thought it was so adorable and thank you so much for thinking of us. Okay, I just found out that one of our stories from Cryptids Canada was featured on Beyond Creepy yesterday, I believe. And uh, I'll put a link to it down in the description box. And of course, if you guys want to go and check it out, leave a comment that we appreciate him using our story. Okay, enough of the jibber jabber. Let's get right to the video. Hi, Leslie and Croutons. I've carried this memory for so long. And when I see my old friends, we often rehash the stories from our youth, and this one I'm going to tell is a nightmare. If you will imagine the movie Stand By Me, well, that was us, a bunch of kids out to explore and have fun. We never wanted to hurt anyone. It was just about having fun and hanging out with friends. So we were all kind of born and raised near the Jacksonville, Florida area. And when I was 11, I think, I was best friends with twins, Jim and Jamie. They always went to their grandma's for the first two weeks of summer, and then they came home and let the fun begin. When they were at their grandma's after the seventh grade, I met a kid who lived with his single mom. They had just moved into the neighborhood. She was super rich and a little on the ditzy side. She had issues with self-esteem and always wanted to model her undergarments for a bunch of little boys. And we always tried to be helpful, till it got to be too much for her son to handle, lol. But that's not where this story is going. So, one time, she took me and her son, Bill Jr., to the lake for the day. And then, she forgot to pick us up at the end of the day. Of course, this was pre-cell phone days. So, Bill Jr. and I walked for miles before we came across some people on the side of the road willing to give us a ride home. We must have had somebody looking out for us because there were times that we were stuck in the middle of nowhere, no thanks to her. She was always the cool mom, but you could never count on her. One day on a whim, she bought me and Bill Jr. an electric bike. It was called a moped back then. Me and Bill rode those things everywhere. And even when Jim and Jamie got back from their grandmas, Bill was trying to get his mom to buy them a moped each as well. She said that she ordered them, but they just never showed up. Anyway, we just rode double. So one day before the twins got home, when me and Bill were out riding our mopeds, we ended up a long way from home. Bill swore that he saw something that scared him a little, because he couldn't quite make sense of it. So, of course, I started bugging him about going back. I thought it was a great way for him to fight his fears. Well, when the twins got home, they agreed that he had no choice but to fight his fears. Of course, they added that we would all be there to help him if something should happen. Eventually. Bill Jr. agreed that he would go. So we talked about going and making plans all the day before. So the day came that we were going to go. We got up at 8 a.m. and Bill's mom was also up and she was making stuff in the kitchen. Turned out she had bought a big bucket of KFC and all the salads, paper plates, and everything else you would need. She packed it all up so we would have a nice picnic lunch. Not something that young boys did, but who were we to complain? It was KFC, or Kentucky Fried Chicken back then, before chicken became politically correct. It was around 8.30 or so when we left. Once we got out of the neighborhood, we turned down a dirt road and we rode for what seemed like miles. There were no houses or businesses for the longest time. Then we arrived at the spot 
where Bill thought he saw something weird. By this time, it was about 10 o'clock in the morning. We walked our bikes in off the road and chained them to a tree. We were a little surprised at how nice the area was. Don't get me wrong, it was thick woods, but it seemed to be untouched by humans. We walked for quite a long time. Then Bill suggested we sit and have the lunch that his mom had bought for us. It was only about ten minutes or so when we started hearing whoop, whoop, but they were drawn out like long whoops, and then the same sounds again. All of us caught the oddity of it. It wasn't a sound any of us had heard from the woods before. Then there was a sound of a huge branch breaking and then whacking on a tree from way off in the distance. Then it got progressively closer. All of a sudden, Jamie said, Holy crap, look at that. So we all looked up in the direction, trying to see what he was talking about. Then Jamie said, You guys, it's a monster. And then we saw it. It was similar to a giant ape that we had seen in the zoo, except that its appearance was so exaggerated and terrifying. All four of us were frozen in fear. Then I noticed that it was looking at us and then at the barrel of chicken. You could see its large nostrils flaring in and out where it was trying to smell what we were eating. After a minute or two of glancing back and forth, it glanced up from us and then looked behind us. I quickly looked and there was another one. I whispered to the guys that we were surrounded and then the one behind us screamed and roared all at the same time. We all covered our ears and I'll admit we were so scared that we started to cry. Then Jimmy said, let's just run, leave the food here. Maybe it just wants the food. So we all agreed and said, let's run on five. So we all ran at the same time, and they chased us. They were on both sides, and we think there was one behind us. At one point, the one that was on the right side seemed to have stopped following us until something grabbed me from behind by my jacket. And Leslie, I never even slowed down. I literally ran right out of my jacket. We ran past our chained up mopeds. We ran longer than we had ever run before. We noticed a run down shack of a house up a long driveway. We never recalled seeing this place the first time we came down or earlier that day. But we were thankful that it was there. The field was filled with broken down cars and trucks. It looked like a big junkyard. We didn't give it a second thought. We just ran up that driveway. We had no choice. Our lungs and our legs were burning so bad. We screamed, help us, help us, as we ran up that driveway. And we saw the door open and two men came out on the porch with shotguns. Then they ran towards us while well, looking past us the whole time. We kept running past them as they shot their guns behind us. Their dog ran down the driveway as if it had done that before. We all stood at the door, waiting for the men to come back up to the house. Finally, they came back and they invited us in to have a glass of iced tea. The two guys turned out to be mechanics who worked there. They had lived there as kids, but moved away when they started having their own families. They asked what had happened, and we told them everything. They said that they are called skunk apes on account of their horrible smell. They said that they've been around these parts forever, but they started coming up around the house when their female twin cousins came to stay for a while. They were looking in the windows and wrecking anything that made loud noises, like the tractor. They started eating from their apple trees and cherry trees. And then one day, when the twins were sunbathing, one of the younger skunk apes ran after them and killed their dog that was protecting the girls. 
it scared them so bad that they left and went to stay with another family member in another state. But the skunk apes still come around once in a while. One of the mechanics asked why we were all the way down there anyways. We explained that we were just exploring and that our mopeds were still tied to a tree down the road. So they offered to drive us back there to get the mopeds. When we hesitated, they said that they would be taking their weapons. So we agreed. Well, when we got there, we discovered the mopeds were bent and destroyed. The front tires were nowhere to be found. So we just left them attached to the tree. Those fellows were so nice and offered to drive us back to Bill's house. After that, we were careful about exploring so far from home. But believe me, those things were always in the front of our minds everywhere we went. Plus, we could never tell anyone because we would get called names. Now I figured out, Leslie, you're the same age as us and you saw your Bigfoot or skunk ape maybe five years before we did, but at least your dad believed you. That, I think, helps a young mind to be able to address the matter and adjust to them. We stayed friends all our lives. We even did things with our families. If there was a wife who couldn't get along, then out she went. We were a tight group, and our wives and our kids call each other best friends as well. We lost our best friend Bill to cancer, and Bill's family and kids and now grandchildren are always invited to every function still. So anyways, I just want to add that we know quite a few people who have seen skunk apes or Bigfoot, so there's no denying it. So that's it for my story. I hope you can use it. Signed, Matthew, Jim, and Jamie. P.S. Leslie, there's a part that I left out because it just never made sense and feels like it's a page out of the Twilight Zone. To this day, we could not make sense of it, but I'll include it, and then you can decide if you feel it's just way too unbelievable or not. When we got home that day, Bill's mom's boyfriend, Billy Ray, asked where our mopeds were. We told him that someone destroyed them when we were out exploring in the woods. So we just left them. He said, no, that they could probably be fixed. And no matter how much we argued with him and told him there was no way they could be fixed, he said, well, let's go and get them anyways. So we lied and made up every excuse we could think of why we couldn't go back with him. But he started to get mad and said, We could all just wait in the car then. So we reluctantly agreed. When we got to the spot, we were all bothered that we didn't see the house where the mechanics lived, the ones who had saved us earlier that day and then driven us back home and met and shook Billy Ray's hand. But in the meantime, Billy Ray went to go get the mopeds. And when he came back, he said, yeah, we were right. They were destroyed. When we left, we paid close attention, and there was not even a driveway on that road, let alone a run-down house with broken-down cars and trucks in the fields. We even asked Billy Ray to go back down and see if we could go thank the mechanics again, and although he was irritated, he said okay. He drove up and down and could not find that place. We were so freaked out over this that a few weeks later, we rode our bikes down that road. There was no property at all, let alone the mechanic's house that we went to that day. This has bothered us all these years. And when each one of us got our licenses and cars, we would drive those back roads just to see if we could find somewhere that could even possibly be their home or business. We scanned the yellow pages. We asked every single mechanic in the area, and nobody claimed to have ever known these two guys. 
So do you see why I hesitated to mention that part? We will not be upset in any way if you choose not to mention it. I decided to add it in case you can offer some kind of suggestion as to what we may have experienced that day. All the best again, Matthew, Jim, and Jamie. Well, I'm at a loss for words. I really, truly am. Uh, It would not be the first time that I have heard stuff like this. As a matter of fact, ironically enough, if you go and check out uh, episode 489, or you could go back to Beyond Creepy and listen to uh, his version of that story, it's a perfect example of how Bigfoot work with aliens. I truthfully couldn't tell you, dear. There's all kinds of unexplainable things, like skinwalkers. That baffles me beyond crazy. Bigfoot, the fact that we just so casually accept the fact that they exist. Other people look at us like we're a bunch of Looney Tunes, but we totally believe they exist. Anyways, like there's just no stop to any of this. But I did find your story to be absolutely amazing. And I thank you for taking the time to send it in to us. Anyways, I hope the rest of you enjoyed this video as much as I did reading it. And I hope everybody has a great evening. Please do me a favor, hit the bell, hit the like, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And of course, you know I love ya. All right, we'll see you back here in a day or two. Bye for now.